Today, we're gonna talk about the Wise Phone 2. They're finally shipping it out. I'm a beta tester, so I got a hold of an early copy, and I'm excited to share with you guys what this phone is all about. My name is Trevor Hunt. If you're new here and you don't know what I do, I make music, I make reaction videos, and I do vlogs as well, and sometimes I review things, but typically I stick to things that I only really care about, and minimalist tech is one of those things. We're gonna dive into the pros, the cons, the hardware, the software, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and whether or not I would buy this phone myself if I were you. Before we get too far, I have a disclaimer. Techless sent me this as a review copy. I didn't pay for this phone, they provided it for me. But they did not tell me what to say. They didn't say that I had to say something positive. They just said, hey, let us know what you think. The hardware is completely done. The software is still in beta. So there may be some bugs. And I said, I will do exactly that. Thank you for sending me this phone. Sometimes as a reviewer or YouTuber, especially as my channel starts to grow, shout out to those of you who have subscribed. We just hit 2000 subscribers if you haven't yet. Why don't you go ahead and take this moment to subscribe? Watch this channel blow up, hopefully, maybe, possibly. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, sometimes scummy companies reach out to me and they'll say something like this. Hey, review our product, give it five stars, tell people to buy it, and we'll give it to you for free. Now, here's my problem with that. It's not a real review. You're paying for advertisement. A real review is a company that's willing for me to say bad things about this thing on my channel and still let me have it. That's the real review and that's what Techlist does. So without further ado, let's jump in. I wanna talk about the hardware of this phone and I'm gonna put the hardware spec sheet on the screen so you can see it. It's got a 50 megapixel camera, 128 gigs of storage. Basically, as I was digging into the Wise Phone 2, I found that it's a Samsung A15 with their um, user interface put into it. I don't know how they did it, but Wise Phone essentially took this Samsung and made it on their One UI, which is their software. It is very similar to the Wise Phone 1 as to how it feels and looks, but it has a lot more features and, and capabilities and the camera's better. I also feel that it's kind of operates smoother. The external build quality is awesome. I love the way the phone looks. I'm gonna kind of look at the camera so I can show you. It's got that bluish, uh, it's fingerprinted like crazy. Sorry, I've played with it a lot. That bluish vibe, it's, about the same size as the Wise Phone 1, maybe, let's see. It is legitimately the exact same size as the Wise Phone 1, and it's bigger than my iPhone 15. USB-C charging port, headphone jack, buttons on the side, volume button, I believe that is. Yep, volume button and a lock button on the side. The screen is super clear and crisp, 1080p screen. The hardware, awesome. 10 out of 10 on the hardware, I love it. I almost like the way it feels better than my iPhone. Okay, with that being said, let's get into the software. The tricky thing about me reviewing the software for this video is that it's in beta. So they made it very clear, hey, some of these things don't work yet. They're shipping the first phones out on November 14th. So if you've ordered one and you're freaking out, please hear me. The Wise Phone 1 software works really well. And when it first came out, there were a couple of glitches here and there, but honestly, overall, smooth, Worked well, the maps were great. Everything about the Wise Phone 1 had great um, responsiveness. I didn't really have many bugs with that phone. The Wise Phone 2 is pretty buggy still because it's in beta. So they're expecting people like me, beta testers, to go through and find the bugs and send them back to them so they can fix them. Hey guys, quick update from editing Trevor. It's five in the morning as I'm watching this video back. I want to say that I've used the Wise Phone for the last two weeks since I filmed the video and they've updated all of the beta software. So they released a big beta update, fixed everything, every complaint I have. The maps work great. You can download Waze and use Waze. Spotify functionality still works amazing. The messages work great. No issues with this phone software now. And I'm filming this right now on the front facing camera. I think it's 13 megapixels, not a bad quality. I mean, honestly, pretty quick when you just get this dramatic look. That's not, that's not bad looking. One notable bug that I found that they're working on fixing is that I can't get the maps to pull up. I can't get my, I can't figure out how good the GPS is. If it's anything like Wise Phone 1, it's going to be a great GPS app. It just doesn't work the well. Sometimes the camera is a little laggy. That's weird seeing myself in there. Show your palm to take a selfie. Oh. 
That's an interesting feature. Maybe that's an Android feature. One thing that I've noticed with, with reviewing these phones is I'm so used to iPhone and some of the restrictions that Apple puts on phones that I get blown away by little things that the Android phones can do, like the Wise Phone 1, shaking it turned on the light. I thought that was awesome. Overall, the rest of the apps are pretty, pretty reliable. I was using the calculator literally this morning on this. I've um, taking notes on it. The keyboard is really accessible. So I, I don't have like a fancy face down camera, but I'll tell you the keyboard functions as good as any smartphone keyboard. My one complaint about the Light Phone 2 and probably the Light Phone 3, um, I haven't used it, but it's the same type of screen, is how clunky the keyboard felt. I couldn't text on it. To me, the Light Phone 2's texting was near impossible. Without the voice text on the Light Phone 2, it's uh, too clunky. And that's why I'll never go back to the Light Phone 2 because of how clunky the texting was. But the texting on this is absolutely super responsive, just as responsive as any other smartphone. The cool thing about the Wise Phone 2 software is there are tons of tools that come preloaded on it. I'll read them off to you. Calculator, calendar, camera, clock, contacts, drive, Google Drive, which I use for everything, so that's awesome. I don't know if this is permanent, but they took Google Drive off and that's that stinks. Really hope they restore Google Drive functionality. Having that kind of access on my phone would be amazing. Gallery to see your photos, keyboard settings, maps, which doesn't quite work yet, messages, which would be texting people, notes, phone, calling someone, the Play Store, question mark, not sure if that's gonna be available whenever it comes out. I don't know if that's because I'm in beta and they're like allowing that to be there. Although I cannot download anything through the Play Store. I have no access. Settings, smart switch to make it easier to go from one phone to the next. Uh, I think that's an Android thing. And th something that I think most people are going to love is that it's got Spotify. And Spotify works. And I'm logged in right now. And that's my song. <laughs> So Spotify works perfectly well. And if you need something to listen to and you like country music, go ahead and check me out on Spotify. I do that too. That's actually what I'm known for most in my state. But online, I'm known most for, I feel like, these videos here. Anyways, the software is impressive and they've got more coming. Really locked down versions of the software. One thing that I think people buy this for is because they don't want access to internet, they don't want access to email, and they don't want access to social media. If you're like me, and you are addicted to those things and you want something to get away from them, I'm, I'm smart enough to get around an Android's restrictions. Give me a phone that I can't do that. I have tried my darndest to get on the internet on this thing. I have tried to watch YouTube videos. I've tried to just surf, get on Facebook. I even found a roundabout way through Spotify to get to Facebook and it still would not allow me to actually get on Facebook, it blocked it. So they've done really well at locking this thing down. And if you buy this for yourself or a 15 year old, they're gonna try to get around that. You might try to get around that on a weekday. And this phone's locked down pretty impressively well. And I tried for quite a while to break through it because I wanted to tell you truthfully or not whether or not it would work. So let's talk about the pros. And before I go any farther, if this video is helpful to you, please leave a like and a comment. That really helps the channel grow. Consider subscribing. Even if you're here just for the tech reviews and the videos like that, I'll still do them when new stuff comes out, new companies reach out and whatnot or if I can afford to buy the stuff, I'll review it. I really enjoy doing review videos and I really enjoy adding to people's life, especially when it comes to minimalist tech and healthy tech options. So the pros of this phone, I the biggest pro is how great the hardware feels in your hand. It's a really quality phone. It's It's got a, I don't know if it's metal or what it is. It feels aluminum or metal to me. Um, the camera is Mwah. The camera is really high definition. It's 50 megapixels. You can see the pictures really well. It's really quality. It lags a little bit, like I said, but but it's still really crisp. Now it's technically two more megapixels than my iPhone 15, although I will say I don't notice much of a difference. I don't I, I don't at all. In fact, I would probably say that I think the the iPhone has somewhat of a better, maybe it's a better processor of the photos or the videos. I don't know. Whatever it is, I think the iPhone takes better video at least than the this phone, but it's still it's still plenty fine for anyone who's gonna need video for anything. The cons, some people aren't gonna like how big this phone is. I've got big hands. I'm a guitar player, my hands are pretty large. So for me, I love the size of this phone, but it's actually larger than my iPhone 15. I wouldn't mind this being a little smaller. It's a minimalist phone. I'm, I'm not gonna be watching a lot of video on this or browsing the internet. It could be a little bit smaller and I think you'd reach a, a, a larger demographic, especially like I could see like a lady or a man with small hands 
they're gonna think this is way too large of a phone. Another con would be, although I've taken pictures on this, I can't figure out a way to put them as my background, which maybe they'll fix that. Okay, hey! Never mind. They they uh, they updated it. When I first received the phone, what a glorious picture of myself. When I first received the phone, I could not change the wallpaper, and now I can. Although you'll see, it changes the front. It does not change the inside, which is kind of nice. The inside's it's supposed to be minimalist. It's very classy. Very classy. Couple things you need to be aware of. There is a monthly subscription with the phone. So you buy the phone, and then you pay like fourteen ninety nine if you're going to keep it with your carrier. A few years ago when I had a significant issue with being on technology way too much and I had an addiction to certain apps and websites, I would have absolutely bought this phone. This would have been so much better than the Light Phone 2. If I was burnt out on smartphones and I was in a place where I felt like I needed to escape, this phone would be my go-to phone. To me, the 15 bucks a month extra it costs, I wouldn't even care. Especially at the 399 price point, that's a pretty good price for uh, a full-blown smart dumb phone uh, with Spotify, mind you, and GPS. That's Those are some quality things that a lot of the minimalist phones didn't have two years ago whenever I was looking into them. It was like flip phones, light phone, and like the punked phone. And those were your options or the options I knew about at the time. I would absolutely buy this phone. And if you're wanting to buy this phone, there is a link in the description. You can use my code Trevor at checkout and I get a 10% kickback. That would mean a lot to me if you decide to buy a phone, if you use the link. But at all, by all means, if you don't want to buy the phone, no worries. I don't care. I just, I'm trying to make an informed decision. And if you're going to do that, why not have it be a win-win? If you want this phone, try the link in the description. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day.